This time on Gear Graveyard, it's a copy of Borland Turbo C from 1990 that is in awesome condition. We have a big house with a big attic filled with old gear. Mom says it all must go, but I say each piece has a story. Welcome to the Gear Graveyard. Okay, welcome back to the Gear Graveyard with Dad and... True. All right. And... Uh, what do you think? What's your guess? Um, maybe some sort of software. Though? Software. Okay. okay, we're good. What kind of software? Uh, maybe some sort of photography photography software. Photography software is a good guess, and it is not correct. Oh boy. Well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is a development package. It is what the, okay. we would call now an IDE or an integrated development environment. Okay. Which means you can write programs. You can write code. Okay. And you're writing code in a language called Turbo C. C, that is correct. And Turbo C was manufactured by the Borland company. And it tells you that um, this is the this is for an IBM PC, in other words not a Mac. <laughs> okay. That was back in the day, the IBM. But that would, that would not be Windows, right? Now Windows back then there wasn't really a thing. Okay. So, but there were other. I don't know. I don't know what other option they might have had here, but it was IBM DOS. So this was a little corner of the box, and the other versions of this would have had like Mac, and uh -huh. then something you know there probably. Okay. All right. And it describes itself as the powerful optimizing C compiler that has it all now Ooh. with integrated source level debugger. My goodness. I know, it sounds big. And it was version 2.0. Version 1 comes one, and I think there was a 1.5 come out prior to that. I can show you this on the side here. Okay. If you wonder how much I paid for it, there it is. I paid $149.95. And that was... Uh, according to Borland, a great value compared to the Microsoft <laughs> version of the same language, which you can see was... 450. 450, yeah. So, um, and you can see there's a great deal of um, really nice uh, copy on the back here that talks about um, the different things you might, uh, you know, the different advantages of not just of using C, but of using this integrated environment. environment. And so I'm just going to, you can people can pause if they want to read this copy and see this cool DOS screenshot. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh, so, that's that's what 1980s or 1990s computers were looking like. That's what 1990 software development looked like. Was Wait. like that or like or like this. Hmm. Yeah. And so um it it felt like it was we were living in the future. <laughs> no seriously. <laughs> okay. It felt like we were living in the future uh, back in 1990. So I think we've covered uh, the outside of this. Ooh, it is not for export, I can Boy. see. Use in the USA and Canada only. Uh, it does have an ISBN on the back of it. I, did, I may probably got that on there before. I didn't look that up, but that probably gives uh, more information about this. But let's open this guy. Mm -hmm. Now, this has not been opened uh, for probably about 30 years. Oh, wow. So we're going to open it up, and we're going to get out what is in here, and we'll see what it is. I haven't looked at it. Um... Bonk. Bonk the camera. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's a floppy disk. That's a floppy disk. These are three and a half inch floppy disks, which kind of means this was not, you know, this was about the time when we switched from the the five and a quarter inch disks to the three and a half inch disks. Okay. So this probably gives a would give a more better actual date. You could probably date it better by looking at this. But yeah, you'd get you get three little floppy disks. Okay. Three little floppy disks can hold next to nothing. <laughs> There's almost no We're talking millibytes, I'm assuming. Millibytes. No, mil no, no. <laughs> <laughs> megabytes. I, I love that word. Millibytes, yeah. No, we're gonna go with megabytes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so this actually has a copyright date of 1988 on it, but mm. I'm reasonably sure I didn't buy it till 1990. And you got the, your installation disk. That is probably a version number right there, uh, mm. so that you could tell if you had any problems. You've got your compiler and your utilities, and you've got your header files and your libraries. Okay. And you would use all three of these to do the installation, and you can actually find online what the... Um, 
installation process look like in the installation screen. Okay. So that's, I think the computer archive places have, have that information. It, it's not particularly interesting to me, but it probably is interesting to somebody else. Okay, so we got the we got the discs. This is the actual program. This is the this is the goods right okay. here, and this is what you were paying one hundred twenty nine ninety five for. <laughs> for basically, those three floppy for discs. these three floppy disks. Now, what you got in addition to that was these manuals. And I know you love some manuals. I do <laughs> love me some manuals. Yes, I do. So here is the um, user's guide, and uh, you know I didn't. You can tell that um, I actually probably opened it because you can tell it's there's a little tiny indicator that maybe I opened uh, not really not not very much I didn't use these very much you can see on the front that that has been opened but these are actually what I would call in mint condition because yeah. I didn't spend a lot of time with them um, but this would have walked you through not only everything there was to know about the um, mm -hmm. development environment but everything there was to know about the um, language itself there's a <laughs> Art for Musician Magazine. How about that? So this is the first one. This is a 412-page wow. book, a page manual that if I had really gotten into learning C, here is here is another insert here. Here is the, um, this also was just, I left this in the book, and this is the, what does it say? The Runtime Library Source Code Professional for Professional Programs. Oh, this is a, this is your registration card. You registered oh. your uh, warranty is what this is. You're not a warranty guy. <laughs> well, no, I didn't do it at the time, and it wasn't that important. The runtime uh, license source code, the no-nonsense license agreement, is still in such teeny tiny print that you could <laughs> you'd take a week to read it. Yeah. So anyway, so that's, that's in there. The second book, also mint condition, this one probably has never been opened, is the reference guide. And this is probably a language reference. You can tell, though, okay, this book is, let's see how many pages this one is, 608 pages, that this book had everything you could possibly want to know. In addition to those two, we have a few little, this is all stuff that came with it originally. Okay. The CompuServe brochure, mm -hmm. ah. a, an online resource. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, um, ooh, how to get technical support, <laughs> which I never needed. The good reasons to register your copy. So maybe that other one wasn't the registration card. I don't know, yeah. I don't know what that was, but there's the, there's where we would have mailed it to Scotts Valley, California. Okay. And then a brochure of the other Turbo languages. And they did have a Turbo Basic. Um, which you didn't, you did not get that. No. One. So we got Turbo C, Turbo Pascal, Turbo Assembler. I did use Assembler, but only in the uh, Microsoft version of it. I didn't use the Borland version of it. Okay. And I don't know. I think they had a Turbo Basic. I don't. There it is. Turbo there Basic. Is. Turbo Basic. Uh, again, an integrated development environment. And basically, what they were selling was the de development environment, which made it easy to write code. Yeah. And the compiler. Okay. To create a fast executable file. All right. So. So here's why all of this is still in mint condition. <laughs> I started coding in BASIC okay. in 1977. Yeah. And I learned every variety of BASIC that came along until this point, oh. until 1990. Okay. And in 1990, there was a lot of talk about C. It was the language you had to learn if you wanted to be current. Mm -hmm. Because C was so much faster than BASIC. And C had so much more functionality than BASIC. And C didn't hold your hand like BASIC. And C was compiled, not interpreted mm -hmm. like BASIC. So I bought Turbo C. Okay. And I learned it. Yes. And what I found um, when I started learning C is that I just, I just didn't like it. I didn't like what it made me go, the hoops it made me jump through to mm -hmm. do what I could do super easily in BASIC. Ah. And there are people out there who will tell you that that is just crap that that's that c is way better than basic in every way and god bless them i can't I, I, it's hard to argue with that but at the time basic was doing what i needed it to do okay. and c was making me jump through hoops that i didn't want to jump through uh, and i felt like this was a waste of my money and i just even though i used it a little bit i ultimately i just put it away and i never developed in in c 
So basically, that is why my, my boxed copy of Turbo C 2.0 uh, from 1990 is still in mint condition. And that is why we can sell it. Now look at that. It's a little faded right there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But that is not because it sat in the sun. That's just, I don't know, that's just aging. It's been in the box yeah, for weird. 30 years. So I don't know what that is. There's a little bit of discoloration there. And that it's the same as true at the top of... That one as well, oh, This yeah. one, just a little bit of discoloration there, but otherwise these are in absolutely awesome condition. And of course I haven't tested the discs, but I have no reason to think they wouldn't work. They haven't been touched in 30 years. And we can pop them open and we can probably see that, we can see that uh, nothing bad has happened underneath there. So those yeah. look good. So my idea is that somebody is going to take this and they're not going to develop with it, but somebody who cares about coding and the history of coding is going to want to have this in their collection that's what i think okay. because it's super cool even though i didn't like the language there's no question that this old software is just kind of cool yeah do you agree it's pretty cool, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think it's pretty cool all right well that's it for this time on the gear graveyard with dad and true thanks for watching